you definitely want to get a little bit of PV blaster on this hub nut a few days before you do your project. You're going to chalk the wheels, leave the Jeep in gear with the parking brake set, jack it up and set some jack stands underneath it. It's also a really good idea to have the battery disconnected when you're working on it and remove the wheels. So now that we got the wheels off, we're going to remove the brake caliper. There's two brake caliper mounting bolts here. This takes a 13 millimeter. You definitely don't want to tighten it. <clears throat> We're going to take these two bolts all the way out and get the brake caliper out of the way. I'm going to slide the brake caliper off. And we're going to take a wire and hang it up here. You don't want to put a lot of torque on your brake line there. So you don't want to let it hang from that. <clears throat> now we're going to remove the brake rotor. Okay, so now I'm going to remove the cotter pin. And then there's this retaining nut over the top of the hub nut under there. Uh, it's also referred to as a spindle nut. You got this retaining cover here. Underneath that, you've got this little washer, which we're going to keep that. And then there's your hub nut. Okay, next we're going to remove the hub nut. And to do that, we put a crowbar in here on these studs to help hold it in place. It takes a 36 millimeter socket, and we already put some PD blaster on that earlier today. So we're going to try to get it off there. Oh. <laughs> this side actually came off relatively easy with just some PB blaster and this breaker bar. But now the driver's side, I had to put a cheater bar off the end of the breaker bar there. With a little bouncing, I was able to break it loose and get that one done as well. Uh, impact wrench, if you have one, can also do the job really well. All right, so we got the hub nut off, and then there's one more retaining washer in here. Okay, now on the back side of the hub here, there's these three hub retaining bolts. They're a 13 millimeter, you gotta use a 12 point socket. And we're just gonna loosen them a bit and leave them in place. And then we're gonna uh, put a socket on the end of it to kind of pound the hub out a little bit. There's one more on the back side there that you can't quite see. All right, so now we're gonna put a socket on the end of the bolt to protect it and just kinda Tap the hub out a little bit. And you might have to move the uh, steering wheel a little bit to get to these other ones. And I think the hub's loose now. And next we're going to use the hub puller to pull the hub off the axle. We put a little more PB blaster on it too. Alright, so we got the hub nut off. 
We got the hub puller on here. The hub is pretty fused right now to the axle. So what we're doing is we left the hub retaining bolts in place a little bit. We put a few screwdrivers back here to give us a gap. And what we're doing is we got it blocked here with the crowbar. We're tightening up this uh, hub puller. We got some PB blaster in there. And then we got a little five pound sludge here. And every uh, few minutes we're giving it some good taps here. That's why we need this gap right here so the axle has somewhere to go. Giving it a few good taps, tightening it down some more, and we're slowly making some progress. So again, with that gap that the screwdrivers gives me, it's making sure that the pressure is on the axle and the hub, that the axle isn't being pushed in onto the differential. Now that we've got it loose, we're removing the hub retaining bolts all the way. Okay, so we've got the hub retaining bolts out all the way. And we left them in just to help stabilize it while we we're trying to remove it. But now that we've got it broke loose, we removed those bolts so we can continue to proceed to pull the hub here. So when you remove the hub, be sure you're not pulling on the axle at all, because this axle will pull out because these retaining bolts are now removed. Alright, before we put our new hubs on, we're going to take a wire brush. We're going to kind of clean up around the steering knuckle and along the axle there a bit. Uh, just get a lot of the dirt and rust and stuff off of there. Alright, we're going to put some uh, axle grease on the splines here. We're also putting a little bit where the hub is going to contact the steering knuckle here and then on the inside where the uh, new hub is going to contact the axle in there too. We just don't want it to get seized up again. Okay, we're ready to install our new hubs. Uh, when you buy your hubs, you really get what you pay for. On this hub for this Dana 30, on this Timken, the part number is 513084. And you're going to want to get a new uh, spindle nut kit. This is part number 05101. Uh, it's recommended to not reuse the old bolts. You definitely don't want to reuse the old cotter pin. Uh, so you get these little kits, they're about nine bucks, and it's worth it. Okay, be sure to get your uh, backing plate on. And then when it comes time to put the new hub on, I used a rubber mallet to kind of tap it on to get the threads exposed enough to be able to get the nuts on here to uh, pull it into place. Okay, and then you're just going to put everything back in in the reverse order. You're going to start with that uh, washer, then you're going to put your new nut on, then you're going to put that little spring washer on, and then the uh, retaining clip, and your cotter pin. The uh, hub nut you're going to torque to 175 foot-pounds. If you don't have a torque wrench that goes up to 175, a lot of uh, auto parts stores will loan you one. And now we're going to uh, tighten down these uh, steering knuckle to hub bolts. We're going to then torque those to 75 foot-pounds, all three of them. Okay, we put the rotor back in place. Next we're going to put the brake calipers back on. You want to put a little bit of grease there and there and on the brake caliper up there and there and then same thing down on the bottom. You don't want to get any grease on the pads or you don't want to get any grease on the rotor here. Uh, it might be a good idea to just take a little uh, brake cleaner and clean this off before you grease everything up. 
And you might have to take a C-clamp or a large pair of pliers or something to kind of compress this piston back in so you can get the uh, brake caliper back on. You don't want to be pushing on the pad itself. You actually want to be down here below on the piston itself. All right, then you're going to set the bottom of the brake caliper in place and push it on. Then we put a little bit of grease on the brake caliper mounting bolt here so that the brake caliper can slide. We're going to put the uh, two bolts in place and we're going to torque those to 132 inch-pounds on the top and bottom. And there's the finished product. All we have to do is put the wheels back on, torque the lug nuts, and because we've been messing with the brakes, we're going to check the master cylinder, make sure the fluid level's good, and then when we get in the Jeep and start her up, uh, probably going to have to pump the brakes a little bit to get them seated. So there you go, and I uh, hope this video helps you out. Check out some of my other uh, Jeep Solid videos. Have a good day.